So I'm gonna apologize ahead of time for the way I look. I decided when I turned 40 about two and a half months ago that I was gonna run every day. I've been doing about uh, five to six days a week, two to three miles, um, nothing crazy, but been keeping with it, so it's been, it's been good. That said, I went upstairs to pull out dinner and decided I should make a video about these steaks I'm about to cook, the process I'm doing, because it is different, um, at least different for me. We have this great butcher locally, JW Truth. They're the only butcher still in Howard County that has their own cattle right behind the shop. So everything's butchered fresh, it's right there. It's this tiny little place in Old Ellicott City or outside of Old Ellicott City in Catonsville and drove by there on the way home today, decided I'd pick up some steaks. Uh, Lindsay tells me I made a pretty mean steak when I was just using my gas grill and I got pretty good at it. Then when I got my smoker, I decided I was going to start reverse searing these steaks, which means I'm gonna cook them really low temperature so they cook evenly, and then at the last second, I'll throw them on direct flame to get the sear marks on them. They turn out phenomenal. So when I went upstairs to pull the steaks out so they can get up to room temperature, I figured, hey, great opportunity to make a video about a reverse sear. So I'm gonna do that, but first I gotta go wash up. So I got the smoker turned on, that's going. I got potatoes in the microwave. I'm cheating a little bit with the potatoes. I don't have a ton of time to cook them from scratch in the oven. So I'm gonna cook them a little bit in the microwave, then throw them in foil, and then I'm gonna throw them in the oven and get that skin crispy. So cheating a little bit, but time constraints on a weekday. I guess it helps if you open the shake side of this, like so. All right, there's one. There's two. So what I do for these potatoes is throw a little bit of oil on them, like so, coat it. So, and these things are hot. Put some seasoning on. Bam! Like that. So as I mentioned, I picked up three Delmonico steaks from JW Truth, and as you can see, these things look just absolutely phenomenal. And what I'm gonna do for this reverse sear is I take my fireboard device, which I'm gonna stick three thermometers in the steaks, monitor the temperature. I'm gonna put them on the smoker at 300 for probably 45 minutes to an hour, get the internal temperature to about 130, then I crank the temperature up on the smoker and throw the steaks directly over the flame to get a sear on both sides and finish them about 140, 145. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully it goes well. So 
I don't want to show off much of this fat, but I don't want that hanger on sitting there. All right. I actually only need one glove, so I'm gonna pull this off, get some oil on these. I just put olive oil on both sides, kind of as my binder. Usually I, I was putting oil on my steaks when I was just straight grilling them because I felt like putting oil on them and then putting them on the grill got this re these really nice markings on them. Because I'm reverse searing this, I'm gonna cook it slow. I don't know that's as important as it was when I was grilling them. So I put a ton of seasoning on here because one, some of it's gonna come off when I put it on the smoker, but I really wanna get a nice little crust on the outside. And I'm not gonna be able to grill these over the flame until the end. So I want it to sit on there and kind of bind to this meat. I don't know if that's a thing, but I feel like my steaks turn out pretty well. So it works for me. As I mentioned, these are gonna still have to come up a little bit more to room temperature, but let's start. Some people try not to put as much seasoning on their steaks because they want the flavor of the meat and people might be watching this cursing me because I have these great Delmonico steaks. Not, they'll, they feel, feel like I'm ruining them by putting so much seasoning on them, but way we like them. So I'm gonna let those rest for a minute. The grill's still gotta come up. Baked potatoes are in. I'm gonna get the thermometers in these things and we'll be good to go. So I'm actually only gonna put the uh, thermometers in the middle one and the one on the right. Because these are the biggest ones. When I put them on the smoker, I'm gonna set them like this. My thought is these two being bigger, if they're at 130, this one's gotta be at 130, if not already past 130. So this is the only tricky part I have with these doing meats like this is the meats are so thin, it's not like a big chicken breast where I know where the thermometer is, so I always wonder how far to put these in. I don't wanna damage much of the meat, so I'm gonna go right here, which looks kinda like the middle, and then it's like, is that thermometer riding the surface? Is it still in the middle? I never know. I don't want it to poke through. Like here, you can start to see it there, which I'm not crazy about, but best I can do. Yeah, like I don't, that doesn't look like it's running center to me. And I also don't want to tear this meat apart trying to get the thermometer in the right spot. So I'm gonna have this be the last time I do this. There, I feel like that's pretty centered. Let's see what that's doing. All right. It looks like we're sitting at 369, so you can see the temperature's coming down. All right, so the temperature is good. All we need to do is get these steaks on. So what I love about the fireboard is it's a small device that sits out there on the smoker. I've got the meat thermometers in that plugged into the fireboard. Fireboard itself has an app. So what you'll notice, and I'm gonna post right here. Hopefully it's not here. Hopefully it's on my left. But what I'm gonna, post a video of what it looks like on my screen. So when I open the app, I can go in and immediately label these. Channel two is the back steak. Channel one is the front steak, which I've already gone ahead and labeled. You can see here at the bottom, it has front steak, back steak. It says what the temperature is. When I hit up here and the back steak as an example, it has an alert. Right now it's set at 165. When I touch that, I can go in and change that. I'm gonna to say to 125, you know, I'll get a notification in the app. It can email me if it wants to. I don't want an email. 
I do want a text. The text will definitely grab my attention and the text will also go to my watch. So I don't have to have the phone on me. But now, if you look, front stakes at 125 as well for an alert. That can just sit on there and smoke. But these sessions save so I can go back and look and know that these stakes, what their weight was, what time I put them on, what temperature I put them on, and I can see through this graph how well they cooked at the temperature. So I know in the future what I can expect. So the app's great. Other things that I use that I mentioned in the other video, like the iGrill, it didn't store those sessions. These sessions store so you have a reference to go back to. So when you do these things in the future, you know what to expect. Genius. So these things are cooking a lot quicker than I planned. Maybe you should have done 250. So they cook a little bit slower. I did 300. I've done 250 in the past, but it's always a rush because you don't want these to sit on for an hour when everybody's hungry and waiting for food. But if you take a look at this graph, you can see, I mean, we're already at 125. I just got a text that the back stakes at 125, the front stakes at 122. So I pulled the window out of the smoker. I'm gonna throw these directly on the uh, grill grates here in a second. All right, steaks are done. They look really good. Sitting it right at 145. I'm gonna let them rest for one second and then I'm gonna cut into them. I'm not a big believer in letting these things rest for too long. I just wanna get them off the grill get them set up and get them on a plate. I don't let them sit for too long. So they look great, turned out well. The end is always, seems to be a bit of a rush trying to get them moved from top rack, bottom rack for the sear and then flip them and, and get them off before they go too long. So let you know how they turn out. There's the end result. You can see the steak is still really pink through and through. And that's what I like about the reverse sear is it cooks evenly so you have pink throughout the entire steak and then you just get that sear on the outside so looks awesome all right so dinner's done and i wanted to sit down for a second and recap this video because what i'm finding with these videos especially when i'm doing anything about cooking is cooking in general for me I'm very, I know times I want to hit, I know when certain things need to happen, and I've got it down. But towards the end of the meal coming together, it's, it's chaos. You're just going in every direction, trying to bring everything together. And for me, once the food's done, you got to come and eat. That's when the food's the best. People drag it in later, that drives me nuts. So what's been tricky, and what's added another layer to that is, now I'm trying to capture some of those on video. So to add in taking video shots of your food or your process on top of doing everything else is tricky. So you YouTubers out there that are taking videos of meals and just whatever, it's hats off to you because I know it's, it's tricky. Yes, you can edit these things to make it look smoother, but even following what you have in your head as your storyline or your your process and capturing each of those steps not easy so with regards to the dinner reverse sear steaks are phenomenal a lot of people have gotten down how to cook really good steaks under direct flame it's it it's a technique that you develop to do that but this reverse sear is great because what's happening is you're cooking the steak low and slow. So the steak is cooking evenly from top to bottom, from outside in. So you get this great red, perfectly medium rare, medium steak, and it cooks evenly. And at the last minute, you're pulling it off and putting it on this flame. So you get that crisp of a char on the outside, but it is red or pink from top to bottom it is it's phenomenal so if you haven't checked it out take a minute to do it you don't need a smoker to do it you can cook it in your oven at 250 300 just monitor the temperature and then throw it on the grill or throw it in a pan to sear it 
um, but it's great. Uh, I highly recommend it. In terms of the devices, the Fireboard, I won't go into a lot of detail about the device. There's a video I have here, hopefully not here, it should be here, but there's a video I've posted. It's a little bit long, so I apologize, but that goes into all the details about how it works. It's, it's just phenomenal because it texts me essentially when I get to the temperature I want and I know I need to move on. It stores each cook into the cloud so I can go back and say, oh, I've made Delmonico's before. At this temperature, this is how long it takes. So I love it. And ultimately the dinner came together well. Hopefully this video comes together as well as the dinner did, but that's yet to be seen. So thanks for checking it out. Hope you enjoyed it.